Yep, it's time for part three. It's been another couple months since the last devlog, and my subscriber count has almost doubled. I've made even more progress now, so there's a lot to get through in this video. Let's get straight into it. Firstly, I went through the comments and looked at some of your guys' suggestions. As you can see, a bunch of you thought that the hand was weird and wanted me to only make the hand show when the player is holding an item. This can be done pretty easily, so here's the process. Firstly, I just made it so the hand disappears when the player unequips an item. As you can see, this looks pretty weird and I needed to make it smoother. I did this by making a simple animation that makes the hand move into and out of the screen, as if the player is reaching their hand into their backpack or into their pocket. After adding this animation to the tool system, here's the finished product. It looks much better now. You guys also suggested that I make a custom proximity prompt instead of using the default Roblox ones. This was also a good idea as the default Roblox prompt doesn't really fit the game and doesn't give SCP vibes. I decided to get inspiration from SCP Unity and made an almost identical copy of it in Roblox. After a couple hours of research, I made it fully functional. This also works with mobile too. Finally, you guys also complained that the top GUI was taking up too much of the screen. I completely agree with this and after a bit of thinking, I decided to make a pause menu for it instead. After getting some inspiration from other games, I made the GUI and moved all of the stats to it. At this point, I also wanted to make leveling up a bit more exciting since the player can barely notice when they level up. I wanted to make a pop-up that appears on the screen when the player levels up, so I made a simple leveling up GUI. This will tween onto the screen whenever the player's level changes. Tweening is just a smooth movement as you can see here. After making it functional when the player levels up, I made a simple level up sound in FL Studio that made it play whenever the player levels up. Here's the finished product. Right now, there is no actual gameplay. The players have nothing to do, so I decided that I should make a mission system. In this video, I'll just work on one of the missions. In this mission, the player has to seal papers from a random storage building and then give it to a Chaos Insurgent in exchange for XP and cash. Firstly, of course, I needed to make the storage area. There'll be six storage buildings next to each other in this space. Now I needed to actually make the building, so I just... <laughs> this is what the empty building looks like, and it's obviously too plain and too similar to the Class D building. To make it different, I added some warehouse windows to the building and put a better roof on it. As you can see now, it looks a lot better and actually looks like a storage building. On the inside, I added some somewhat realistic shelves, because it is a storage area after all. Here's the finished product of one of the buildings. I'll simply copy and paste this building to fill out the storage area after the mission functionality is done. Now I needed to actually script the mission system. Before scripting the functionality, the player needs to be able to buy and store their missions. I made a mission purchasing GUI, which is inspired by Sea of Thieves as you can see. After making the GUI, I needed to make a prompt that confirms that you actually want to buy something. Just like how many applications say, are you sure, when you press exit. This was pretty easy to do, and I just made it so if you press tab, it declines it, and if you press enter, then it accepts it. Don't worry, this is also clickable for mobile players. Finally, I needed to make the missions savable, otherwise you'd just lose them after you leave the game. Now this was pretty difficult to do. After some long research, I found out that you could store a table in a data store, by using JSON encode and JSON decode. Don't worry, I don't fully understand it either, but it works. After purchasing missions, the player needs somewhere to store them, so I made a separate GUI which will be used for storing your missions. The player can only store up to three missions at once, but you can delete missions to make space for better ones. Here's the full mission purchasing and storing functionality. Now that the functionality is done, I of course needed something to replace the parts. I decided that it would be really cool if a Chaos Insurgent NPC sells the missions to you, so I headed over to Sketchfab and looked for a Chaos Insurgent model. This one looks decent, right? It imports into Roblox normally, so let's import the animations. 
What the f Yeah, that model was a bit dodgy in Roblox, but luckily there was another identical model on Sketchfab that worked fine. I spent an hour or so importing the animations. <laughs> And now the Chaos Insurgent was ready to be converted into an NPC. The mission Chaos Insurgent will just be chilling, sitting down in a Chaos Insurgency building, which I haven't built yet, so I'm just doing this in the Class D building for now. All I had to do was move the proximity prompt into his torso, and voila! Now just like the robot, I wanted some tutorial dialogue so the player knows what they're doing. This was easily done by adding some lines into my dialogue module and copy pasting the code from the robot. I also added some gesture animations, so the Chaos Insurgent moves while he talks. Here's the finished tutorial dialogue. Now I had to script the actual mission. Finally, this is about to turn into an actual game. Firstly, I added some crates to the storage area because it is pretty useless just having an empty storage area with no purpose. I made some code that picks a random storage area, then it picks a random crate in that storage area and inserts a proximity prompt and a highlight into it. Now when the player has collected all of the info or just finished the proximity prompt, I made the gate lock so the player is trapped inside the storage area. This is because there'll be a mini boss battle slash fight thing where the player has to kill zombies that spawn in. The number of zombies will vary depending on how high the reward is and what level the player is. After all the zombies are killed, a chaos insurgent is spawned at a random part of the map and the player has to make their way to him and give him the papers. This was really easy to do and it gives the player some cash and XP. Finally, the mission functionality is all done and all I need to do from now on is to polish it up. Firstly, I needed to fix this horrible GUI. I took some inspiration from GTA and made this better looking GUI that also has objectives so the player knows where to go and what to do. So far, the mission has been pretty silent, which is boring as hell. Just like most other games out there, I needed to add some voice lines. Now, my voice wouldn't really work at all for a Chaos Insurgent, so I asked my Discord server if any of them could do a voice that is somewhat like Ghost from COD Warzone because his voice is perfect for a Chaos Insurgent. Luckily, within a couple hours, someone had messaged me and sent me some demo voice lines. These sounded really good, especially considering that he was doing these for free. So I sent him some lines to do, and within an hour, he sent me all of them, including some variations. I imported these into FL Studio, split them up, added some slight effects, and then imported them into Roblox. Now with some simple lines of code, I added them to the Chaos Insurgent and the mission. Here's some of the finished dialogue. Good luck. Listen, you want to earn some cash? Hey, nice seeing new face right here. Good luck. Good luck. Adding on to the sound effects, I wanted to fill in the silence with some upbeat and slightly intense mission music that will play in the background. I spent a couple hours making a mission song in FL Studio, then I added it to the mission. I'll upload the song onto my Dark Eclipse channel as soon as possible. I think that's enough for this video. If you want more frequent updates to the game, be sure to join the Discord server. I post sneak peeks there quite often. I'd like to thank my three patrons, along with these people who have sent super thanks donations in the comments. You guys really help me stay motivated and keep making videos. That's all for now. Bye.